So for our first speaker, um, we'll introduce the speaker from Native Native Cape. So Mega Pandey is a design architect professionally with more than 10 years of international working experience in all aspects of the planning, designing, implementing, and executing major infrastructure projects and has been a part of a responsive work process by the sustainable green building method. Recently, she started to share her learnings and experiences on web and social media with the name Native Keep. She mostly talks about sustainable living, eco-conscious lifestyle, planet-friendly choices, and zero-waste recipes to be adopted by individuals within a society. Analyzing many perspectives on self-awareness and experiences along with collective social identity. She is also the creative head of Kuala Lumpur Hospitality and the council member of Women's India Chamber of Commerce and, Indust and Industry, WICCI in Malaysia. Mega holds a master master's degree in a classical dance form called Indian Kathak Dance. She firmly believes and practices conscious and sustainable living and loves outdoor workouts, exploring local food and knowing the, the traditional culture and art forms. Again, let's welcome Ms. Mega Pandey. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear, hear me clearly, children. If you can, just type uh, GM good morning on the chat so that I know everyone is I'm clearly audible. So how are you doing today? I hope that you children are in good health, which is the most important aspect these days. I wish and hope that you all are doing wonderful. So my good wishes and very good morning to you. And I'm so sorry to bug you all in early in the morning. My name is Megha Pandey and I'm founder and creative head of Native Keeps. I feel very obliged and honored to be part of this prestigious Chiang Kai-shek College to be, you know, representing myself as the speaker and instructor to help develop the skills of you young bright children to take actions and you know tackle the most important crisis the world is facing currently that is climate change so i hope uh, that by now you already must be knowing little bit or maybe more on climate action and climate crisis and a little bit more about zero waste lifestyle but before we begin let me give you a brief introduction about what i do why i do so as i said i as i said uh, my name is vega and i'm up and running native keeps native keeps actually is a platform to you know to talk and to raise awareness about sustainable living you know how you lead an eco friendly lifestyle you know what can be your zero waste choices actually we analyze and you know forecast many perspectives on self awareness and you know experience along with our responsible social identity actually and you know collectively make this earth a comparatively better place for everyone to sustain together and you know keep our mother earth intact together so children do you know what does native means do you have any idea what does native means if if you have any idea just key in something on the chat so that uh, i know that you have some some idea about native just write whatever you know so i will tell you also native actually means belonging to a particular place by birth by roots you know native i am a native to some place you are a native to some place and keeps simply means you know to retain to watch you know to take care so basically the idea behind native keeps is to you know to take care of your native to take care of your mother earth so basically it's like a compound word that is formed you know to to talk about all these things so we i write blogs i write some make some graphic instagram contents to you know to give 
give insights for everyday changes and i also make you know zero waste recipes so that you which you can also make at home to cut down my plastic waste at home so basically that's it about native keeps i think more or less you have an idea what actually is native keeps now now the another thing i would like to share is what how we gonna approach this workshop today you know what what is the instruction for you children so to begin with let me introduce with you all few things in mind today to be able to grasp and absorb this you know because it's a 1.5 you know one 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 plus hours workshop so you should know what actually you need to learn from it so what is the purpose why are we meeting today what is the purpose of this workshop so the purpose of this workshop is to make you all aware and awaken with the positive thought of climate change and climate emergency and how overall environment is correlated to our activities this is what is the purpose to let you know all right what is the objective objective is very simple my objective today will be very straightforward i want you all to be aware of the things that are happening with us and with the planet planet and let you decide you know you are the you are the future of our world so let you decide what needs to be done i want you all to take this issue as a personal issue although it's a community issue but i want you to take this issue as a personal issue and act on it all right and how will we approach this we will approach it in a very simple manner actually this is actually a talk so we will talk in examples we will talk in some graphics and it will be like a interactive session all right so we will approach this workshop as a interaction not a study material i don't want you children to you know take a pen and paper and write everything what i am telling you let's talk a informal talk about what needs to be done what's happening and next up is the preparation i think there is no preparation as such before we decided that we will make few zero waste um, products but i think due to covid it's a bit difficult so i think we will just have a look in the videos and see how it is done so i just need your attention if i say children write this write that so you just need to do that that that's all and the workshop if i talk about the workshop this workshop actually will, will as mary bell just said that we will be focusing on climate action the goal number 13 and this workshop will uh, you know throw some lights on you know sustainability what is climate change why it is happening and what are the steps you can take to lessen the burden actually all right and what when we end this workshop what will be the overall learning so we are actually here to help each other right motivate each other and work towards a common goal you know to sustain so don't feel shy and let's kick start this workshop i hope that i'll be able to you know encourage you and motivate you by the end of this workshop and you know take me as your friend and whatever whatever is in your mind just feel free to ask me all right so can you all type g8 great in the chat box so that i know you all are ready <laughs> all right so children what are we going to talk about today part 1 we have already discussed a quick introduction of who am i what i do and what we're going to talk about part 2 actually part 2 for the so which we're going to start now part 2 for the next 45 minutes we will discuss basics like what is sustainability why it is so important currently and you know as mary bell said what are the goals of overall sustainable development about climate action you know what is creating climate change basically the problem part 2 we will discuss the problem what is happening actually and part 3 is actually a interactive session where for the next 30 minutes we will talk about actions like what we can do you know what we can do to lead a waste free and a green lifestyle you know what should you be making at home and what are the things you can make at home and why leading a plastic free life and natural life is important and then part 4 is about you know we will just summarize the the workshop and we will take few questions if you have any and then we will end up all right so this is the structure basically so that you you just grab a water bottle because it's a 1 hour plus workshop so you need to drink water and all so let's start children are we good to go all right so just write g8 so that i know that you all are ready <laughs> okay g8 is great <laughs> all right amazing okay so let's start 
Okay, children. Children, do you know what is sustainability? Do you have uh, like some clue about sustainability? So as you can see this slide, I have broken sustainability word into two parts. You can see I have, I have divided this sustainability into two parts saying sustain and ability. So if you go by the literal meaning of sustain, sustain means to continue for a large amount of time, you know, to sustain as in to, to just continue life. And ability, ability means the power or the capacity to act physically, you know, mentally, legally, morally on something. So basically, if you club sustain plus ability is actually, it means to, you know, to keep it going. Sustainability actually is a concept to keep going. The life should go on, you know, it should sustain. You know, it means that, it means that, you know, it's, uh, careful and judicious use of natural resources to meet the current needs without disturbing the ability for the future generations like you to meet your needs. So I, I'll tell you by an example, okay? If we have an apple tree, okay? And, the, and that apple tree has 100 apples and I have two generations to serve. So sustainability is that I take 20 apples from that tree eat those 20 apples and keep 80 apples for the future generation, all right? And what I do from those 20 apples is that is I eat the apple and sow the seed and make 20 apple trees. That is sustainability. And what is not sustainable? If I take the apple tree and I eat all 100 apples for myself and cut the tree, that is not sustainable. All right, so basically the careful and the judicious use of our natural resources, which we have been gifted by Mother Earth, you know, we have to use them very precisely so that we have to use them very consciously so that it, our future generations like you, young, bright children can use them. You know, you, you, our generations coming after you can use them. Basically, sustainability, sustainability addresses and focuses on better quality of life, you know, to meet our standards, like we, we lead a nice life without overusing it, you know, without overusing all the natural cycles and biodiversities. Sustainability thinks for future generations, you know, it rises above personal interest and look at the things at wider picture. Okay, children. So if I ask you, can you give me one word conclusion for sustainability? What if I say, hey, what is sustainability? What is one word or one sentence that you, you will tell me? You can write in the chat box if you want. One word conclusion for what is sustainability is continuing life on earth for us and for future generations to come easily. Okay, there should be no, no hassle, nothing. Okay, now what is sustainability? You know, you have an idea what is sustainability. Now, why we need sustainability? Why are we even talking about sustainability? Okay, so if you see this slide, you can see that I have made a man in between, like a caricature in between, which is depicting human actions. Okay, and then I have happy earth and sad earth. Okay, what is happy earth? How will earth be happy? Earth will be happy if we have like green plants, biodiversity, you know, there is clean water, there is pure and nice air, there is healthy lifestyle, and there is happiness. Basically, there is happiness all around. People are happy, children are happy, everyone is happy. What is a sad earth? Sad earth is full of disasters, you know, it has pollution, it has climate rise, it has extension of wildlife, it has sadness. So basically that is sad earth. And what depicts if a earth will be sad or earth will be happy? Human actions. You know, we are being a very small, very small part of nature should not hamper or disrupt the natural cycles of the ecosystem. You know, we should act responsibly. So, so why we need sustainability, children? We need sustainability for the economic growth of the world, you know, to protect the environment, you know, for prosperity and happiness and health, you know, for, for the good quality of life. It is very simple. Why we need sustainability? Because we want a good quality of life and we want existence of future human generations in a best possible manner. 
all right so basically sustainability is important because it sees the overall flourish and development and improvisation with time you know not degrade with time why we want to act on sustainability because we want to upgrade with time and not degrade with time this is why we need sustainability all right so children if i ask you why what is the one word conclusion of why we need sustainability then you can say that we want we need sustainability because we need a good quality of life for us and for our future generation and not just humans but animals wildlife marine life overall the biodiversity you know the best quality of life for the biodiversity we need sustainability all right so i think what is sustainability and why why we need sustainability must be little bit clear to you all right now next comes is what is a balanced sustainability all right so if i say that we should have a sustainable life you know the world should be sustainable what are the areas that are covered in that why when we say that you know we have achieved sustainability all right what is the conclusion point when you can say sustainability has been achieved or it is under control so basically there are three major pillars of sustainability as maribel also told you and there is a fourth one as well which is which is sometime included and sometime not included all right so i will tell you how you will how you will remember this all right so imagine sustainable if you see the slide you see imagine sustainability is a house it's like a building which you can see here okay and this sustainability is a house that is that has a roof supported on four pillars and what are those four pillars some people say that three pillars but fourth aspect is also there so these four pillars means four pillars is four p's okay which which makes a perfect sustainability that is people you can see people planet profit and preserve actually all right so basically people what people contribute people contribute to the social aspect of sustainability okay as you can see social people connects to social okay social is more about you know human wellness of people ensuring that you know nobody is compromising on quality of life you know there is better education awareness programs good working conditions it talks about equality in the society all right so people contribute to social factor of sustainability okay then second comes the second pillar is profit profit contributes to economic development because see for everything to to just go you need economic development you need you know economic development work to provide good opportunities you know sorry to accelerate economy without harming the you know the surroundings or comfortable working conditions better finances investment plans making better banking facilities so that is profit that will that will make a profit aspect of sustainability third p is preserve what is preserve preserve is the cultural sustainability you know cultural protection you know maintaining our traditions our cultural heritage basically we have you know manila has a strong cultural heritage i come from india india has a strong cultural heritage but if we destroy our cultural heritage if we don't follow our traditions it is not sustainable all right so basically you know all the conservation of arts of craft of moral methods you know collection of human knowledge over so many years should be protected for future generations to come basically if my grandmother told me something she will tell me i will tell my children my children will tell their children and that's how traditions go that's how culture goes so the cultural sustainability is also very important all right and last but not the least and the most important aspect of a culture of a perfect scenarios for a sustainability is planet all right which we will be focusing today planet talks about environmental protection you know talking about envi environmental protection has numerous aspects actually you know you know we protect the ecosystem we protect marine life wildlife flora fauna forest it's talk about you know 
big changes with small actions and that's why we are here that's why we are talking about you know environmental factor of sustainability today that is climate action you know we we want to address this addresses a larger community for the people around the world basically if you talk if you if you more or less listen to uh, you know sustainability usually people are talking about environmental protection but it, it has more scenarios as well and today also we're going to talk about environmental sustainability only so i think by now you know that if somebody asks you hey what is the balanced sustainability why when will you say that a sustainability is achieved you have to say that we have to follow four p's we have to see four p's for a perfect sustainability the people should be happy that is social eco social factor profit should be making economical sustainability and the we should cultural sustainability should be there to preserve our culture and the planet planet protection environmental protection are the perfect scenarios all right so children can you tell me if i ask you one word conclusion for what is a balanced sustainability you just have to say you have to write on the chat box four p's can you write i hope you're not sleeping <laughs> just write four p's so that i know you are awake <laughs> all right amazing good children i can see all the chats pouring in four p's all right children wonderful okay so let me show you a video uh, now a small video in which you will see what is the sad truth you will see how men are how men how humans are hampering what has been given to us as a gift to the in the earth so just have a look all right children <laughs> so this is actually a sad truth which is what is happening right now and this is like a pictorial presentation of what we are going go doing to the earth and what eventually can happen all right so next up then we uh, so as we we saw what is happening what is sustainability benefits why, why it is important now we talk about as meribel also tell you the sdgs the 17 sustainable development goals actually the sustainable development goals or you know they are also called global goals are a collection of 17 interlinked goals designed to be to be like a blueprint you know and basically you know the four pillars we just discussed economic social environmental and uh, the preservation the cultural actually th those four pillars have these divisions you know they have taken out the important things that needs to be developed for the goals so basically they have like no poverty zero hunger good health and well being quality education gender equality clean water and sanitization clean energy you can all see here decent work and economic growth goal number 9 is industry innovation and infrastructure reduced inequality sustainable cities and communities because you know we have to develop also accordingly responsible consumption then 13 which will be focusing today's climate action is goal number 13 which is climate action then 14 is life below water life on land and you know p 16 is peace justice and strong inclusions and 17 is partnership for these goals basically the goal number 17 is the partnership for these goals and they are all you know they were set in the united nation general assembly and was intended to be achieved by 2030 they made it in around year 2015 and there it was a you know 15 year old 15 year long plan only 5 years have passed now only 10 years are left and uh, basically they are still working on and if you have heard of paris agreement it is a very important agreement in terms of sustainability and you know global goals so in march 2020 189 countries have you know ratified the paris agreement which 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 agrees on you know climate change dealing with greenhouse gas emissions i will tell you later in the slide what is greenhouse gas emissions so basically this is 17 sustainable development goals this is just for your reference i know because you should know actually if if we talk about sustainability you should know what are sustainable goals not like you have to learn but you should be aware and this is what this slide is about you should know that climate action is goal number 13 which we going to talk about today all right 
so now the important thing comes can you say okay on the chat so i i know that you are okay to just see what is uh, what is happening okay children very good you are very quick to reply <laughs> thank you all right so next let's go okay children do you know now we come to the point do you know what is climate change what is actually climate change okay so basically i hope that you know by now that what is the difference between a climate and weather do you know just type in if you know the difference i hope you are not confused because you know when i was a little kid like you not little like you but i was a kid i used to you know i used to be really confused about what is climate and what is weather so my teacher told me one thing to you know to make me clear that is if you look out of the window you know window is w you look out for the weather you know if i am looking out of the window today it's the weather so basically you know you are if you look out of out of the window you are seeing the weather today so the weather is only temporary for example you know today it's raining or today it's very sunny or it's very hot today climate on the other hand is more than just a few warm or cool days you know if i say today is raining i will not say that the climate is rain no actually climate describes a typical weather condition it's a weather condition that an entire region has for a long long time and what is that long time probably you know 30 years 30 years 35 years you know 40 years and earth climate has been constantly changing it is not a new phenomena that you know we say that oh climate is changing no earth climate has been changing constantly even long before humans came into the picture you know when we were not there then also climate was changing however the problem is now that there are unusual changes recently for example earth average temperature has been increasing much more quickly than they would expect over one last 150 years you know there is a pattern so there is a pattern that nasa satellites they all see how the climate is changing but the last 150 years has been horrible all right so if i say what is climate change so climate change is actually the change in the average condition of the earth so basically if i say that you know earth average condition is this but now it is changing what is changing the temperature is changing you know the rainfall is changing the basically what is climate change climate change is the change in the temperature of the earth you know if the temperature changes if the earth become warms there are shrinking glaciers you know the sea level rises ice ice melts as you can see in the slide and you know if the ice melts the, you know the rainfall if there is warmth in the earth the precipitation is more the rainfall is more if the rainfall is more you know if for example a given crop is grown in certain climate and certain temperature and certain condition that will change so basically if i am having these kind one kind of flower in summers and the climate has suddenly changed the blooms will change the or the crops will stop uh being produced so what is climate change children climate change is actually the change in the average condition and what is that average condition the temperature if i say hey do you know what is what is climate change so what you will say children you will say that earth's average conditions are changing that the, the temperature is changing the rainfall is changing glaciers are shrinking you know there is a level there is a rising level in the sea and ice is melting faster so this is climate change okay and it is not an it is not a new phenomenon climate change is not new nothing fancy but the problem is that it there has been an extensive change in the last 150 years okay so then the question comes what causes climate change why there is a climate change not negatively but generally why there is a climate change okay so my next question is do you know what makes earth warm why we are in such a cozy conditions i hope that you all must be knowing and it's in the slide now the reason for having a comfortable comfortable environment in the earth is because of greenhouse effect you know as you can see in the slide that you know earth is a comfortable place for everyone
one form you know it is just the right temperature for plants and animals you know including us so what happens is this is a greenhouse effect actually if you can imagine greenhouse is have you seen a greenhouse greenhouse is you know it stays warm inside during the winters it's like a glass house and in the daytime sunlight shines into the greenhouse and warms the plants and air inside this is greenhouse all right so actually the greenhouse effects work much on the same way on the earth that is why it is called greenhouse effect gases in the atmosphere such as i will tell you about the greenhouse gases gases in the atmosphere you know you see can you can see this atmosphere layer in the slide this is what makes earth special there is a atmosphere line which which acts as a glass shield to the earth okay so gases in this atmosphere such as carbon dioxide you know trap heat just like a glass roof of the greenhouse and then this effect is called greenhouse because during the day the sun shines through the atmosphere earth surface warms up in the sunlight at night earth surface cools down releases heat back to into the air but some of the heat is trapped by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and this is what keeps our earth warm okay now what is happening is this greenhouse effect you know the gases inside the greenhouse effects are increasing you know if for example carbon dioxide is one of the gases that make our earth warm what is happening is the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are increasing all right so that's why earth is becoming warm let me give you a small video which shows which show you which will show you graphically how this greenhouse effects works all right children just have a look the earth and the moon are basically the same distance from the sun yet temperatures on the moon average an unlivable negative 18 degrees celsius and even deadlier they range from negative 170 celsius during lunar night to 100 celsius at lunar noon regularly exceeding both the coldest and hottest temperatures ever recorded on earth and while the days and nights on the moon are about 14 times longer than those on earth our planet's relatively fast rotation isn't what spares us from those loony temperatures. What protects us is our atmosphere. By day, it serves as a shield, blocking out the most harmful and energetic of the sun's rays and about one third of the less intense but visible light. At the same time, it traps the infrared radiation, aka heat, radiating out from Earth's sun-warmed surface, keeping us from freezing solid at night. In order for our atmosphere to absorb any kind of radiation, it needs to have some electrically charged particles for passing electromagnetic waves to push around. And most of our atmosphere is made up of gas molecules that don't have an electric charge. They all have a balanced number of positive protons and negative electrons. But some molecules hold most of their negatively charged electrons closer to one side, lending them a lopsidedness that can jiggle back and forth to absorb the energy of incoming infrared rays. For example, water, ozone, and nitrous oxide are all electrically lopsided, so they all absorb infrared radiation. Then there are gases like carbon dioxide and methane. On paper, neither molecule looks lopsided, so it doesn't seem like they should be able to absorb any radiating heat. But in reality, gas molecules aren't motionless. They crash into each other billions of times per second, knocking each other in different directions and also into different modes of rotation and vibration. And it turns out that both carbon dioxide and methane spend most of their time shaking it in electrically lopsided ways, allowing them to absorb infrared rays and help insulate the Earth. Even though many different kinds of molecules can absorb infrared radiation, the vast majority of our atmosphere can't because it's made of nitrogen and oxygen, which don't get lopsided even when they are vibrating. They're too symmetric. Nevertheless, the lopsided 1% are such good infrared absorbers that they manage to intercept about 90% of Earth's outgoing heat. Each captured ray gets pinged around the atmosphere, and most end up returning to the surface at least once before escaping to space. We don't need to visit the moon during frigid lunar night to know just how important the game of radiation pinball is for Earth. Ice records from our own coldest climate show that small natural variations in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce relatively big changes in temperature. They also show that, compared to the last 800,000 years, the game today is much, much harder. All right, children. So this is basically about greenhouse effect, how this greenhouse effect works, what are the gases. So if you look closely in the slide, you must be knowing by now that what are the gases that contribute to greenhouse effect. 
this is very important what is important is gases that contribute to warm the earth what are those gases number 1 carbon dioxide as you can see in the slide number 2 is methane number 3 is chlorofluorocarbons nitrous oxide water vapors etc all right now this is not important because obviously this phenomena has been going on for a long time and carbon dioxide it was and all the other greenhouse gases were acting as a you know as a blessing to us but now what is happening is there is a climate change so children what is creating climate change one word answer for what is cre creating climate change for me is not the greenhouse gases it's the human activities you know now i will tell you why so you see this slide in which i have written five things burning of fossil fuels farming of livestock cutting down forest fertilizers landfill waste i will tell you what is happening you know because we you know what are the fossil fuels children uh, if you know can you type in what is fossil fuels if you have any idea or you have any idea about renewable and non renewable sources all right i will tell you quickly renewable renewable sources are which can be renewed which has earth has given me like sun water waves sea biomass all renewable non renewable is like coal gas petroleum which is in the earth but it will go it will deplete all right so what is happening is we are burning the fossil fuels we are burning the non renewable fossil fuels which are coal oil gas you know we are burning because we need factories we need so many production we need industries so these burning of fossil fuels produce carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide a lot you know there it, it is a major contributor of carbon dioxide so now what we have done is we are burning so much of fossil fuels we have made so much of industries so many things that carbon dioxide has increased another thing what humans have done is increased of livestock farming do you know what is a livestock okay livestock is you see that you get lot of milk cheese butter and you know eggs meat in your home you get it in the super store on the on all the packaged food so how how uh, you think that that milk is coming from home you think somebody is grazing uh, animals at home and giving you milk no there are big big factory farms you know there are big animal farms where they graze animals where they you know then factory farms is another topic to discuss but where they keep these animals you know for livestock for meat for eggs for dairy for cheese for curd yogurt you know all the things you eat so these what happens is these livestock farming like cow sheep poultry pork i mean pig produce large amount of methane when they digest their food so basically when they eat food and when they digest they produce methane so much so that it has been now a global contributor to greenhouse gases we are farming so much of livestock that it is now contributing to the methane generation what another factor is contributing to methane okay another thing is you know we use fertilizers in our uh, in our crops when we do agriculture we we make we uh, throw pesticides so when that pesticide is mixed with sunlight and water it produces nitrous oxide and other greenhouse gases which is contributing to global warming all right then another thing is we are cutting down forest i i hope that everyone knows uh, what cutting down forest what deforestation means we are cutting down forest for land we are cutting down forest for making bridges buildings papers etc etc and you know right trees absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen so when we cut down all the trees carbon dioxide is just floating around in the environment another thing is landfill waste you know what is the landfill landfill is where all the trash of your uh, of your community is collected i will just show you the picture so that landfill creates lot of when water and you know it produces leach when water and rain and sunlight falls on that collective landfill waste it produces methane so children if i ask you oh let me show you what are actually these all these things so this is this picture you can see is the burning of fossil fuels this can be any industry because all the industries are run either by coal or by or by petroleum or by gas 
all right so these all the smoke which is coming out is carbon dioxide all right then you see these factory farms these are the cows which are raised and taken out milk and taken out meat they when they eat food they produce methane all right this is also a factory farm this is a picture of a factory farm a typical picture of a factory farm livestock farm then this is fertilizer sprays how we spray the fertilizer on our crops and this produces nitrous oxide which is a greenhouse gas then this is a landfill children if you have not seen any time this is a landfill which when you know there is water and there is sun it produces methane all right so children if i ask you what is creating climate change what is you know what is creating climate change your one word answer is obviously greenhouse gases but who's contributing to those greenhouse gases us so if i ask you if i you need to write on the chat i say hey who's creating climate change you know so what you will write human actions all right so can you can you type in human activities human actions whatever in the type in the chat box so that i know that you are uh, you know what is actually leading all to these all these you know changes wonderful children i received so many messages of human activity okay so now let's head to conclusion part and why why we are talking about climate action i'm so sorry there has been so much of typhoon in manila in the last week and this this workshop was also you know cancelled due to it now what is happening due to because of climate action you know natural disasters have been always been there but the natural disasters are increasing i will tell you how you see this slide i have i have written wildfires droughts typhoon earthquake floods how how this is happening by a climate action i will uh, climb uh, you know climate when when there is heat when the earth becomes heat number one is you know the land becomes very hot and what happens in the forest the the dried trees catch fire with each other you know when they become so hot that they catch fire and when they catch fire there is a wild fire in the in the you know in the locality wild fire has been you know wild fires in california it has been a regular incident incident now it's happening every year in fact twice a year all right then with the wildfires happens droughts when there is wildfire the the when there is heat the land becomes very you know very hot there is no rainfall and then there is a drought how are the typhoons connected with uh, with climate change i will tell you this is important for you what happens is when the when the earth becomes warm the air also becomes warm all right when the air become warm the energy in the air also increases you know the air is lighter when it is cool when it is warm the energy also increases now what is happening is in the in the antarctic region uh, the glaciers are melting because there is a climate change so when the glacier melts the sea level rises now the sea level rises and the energy in the air is has increased so when these two combines and there is a wind the winds are stronger and more destructive that's how typhoon happens that's how the severity of typhoons increases what about earthquake how earthquake is related to climate climate change because we as humans are blasting the tectonic plates are drilling down the earth's tectonic plates to drill the oils what we are doing is we are doing unplanned urban development so when the tectonic plates of the earth earth shatters obviously earthquakes will come and they used to come before also but now the severity has increased and obviously i should not be telling you why floods are coming because of you know climate action like oh sorry why why floods are coming because of uh, climate change because the sea levels are rising so so uh, the floods are coming so why why you think is children if i ask you why climate action is important why we are even talking about climate action is for our life and for sustainability of future generation and for us if i say children right why climate action is important for you why so you say you will type in for life for our life and for sustainability climate action is important okay can i get in some answers quick answers why climate action is important for sustainability and for human life for human life for biodiversity life all right so 
this is actually a circle we talked about sustainability what is sustainability why it is important what is happening and now we have ended up here now the conclusion part is now you just have a look here what this actually uh, let me show you a quick video for you for your reference extreme weather is now a common staple of our daily news the UK saw its highest temperature ever back in July, while the US had its second hottest and second wettest year on record. In fact, temperature records around the world were smashed last year, with several countries all experiencing some of their hottest ever months. Last month was the warmest June on record. By the weekend, at least 14 states are expected to break temperature records. This June heat wave will possibly break previous national all-time records. In fact, uh, Germany recorded its highest ever June temperature on Wednesday. And as our climate continues to change, natural disasters are on the rise. 2019 was one of the most active cyclone periods on record, with the biggest, Hurricane Dorian, killing at least 70 people and leaving 70,000 homeless. Meanwhile, the worst bushfire season in living memory over in Australia has fueled debates around the relationship between climate change and natural disasters once again. But how exactly can natural disasters be affected by climate change? Climate change refers to changes in weather over a long period of time. Many of the ways we measure climate point towards a global warming trend, and the planet getting hotter can influence extreme weather events in a number of ways. Take wildfires, for example. Rising temperatures mean the periods of drought are more common and last longer. If there is less moisture in the earth because of increased temperatures, things can catch fire and spread more easily. Australia has experienced its hottest day on record. You know, we are seeing unprecedented conditions. So in Australia, for instance, while climate change can't be pinned down as the direct cause of bushfires, scientists have said that this hotter, drier climate has led to the fires becoming more intense. A drier climate also impacts on local ecosystems, and how plants and animals behave differently when their environment changes can have a knock-on effect on natural disasters. The relationship between the bark beetles and wildfires in California is just one example of this happening. When the trees there are weakened by drought, they become more susceptible to attacks from the beetles, who bury inside the tree and kill it. In some areas of California, more than three quarters of trees have been killed by the beetles, leaving millions of dried up trees ready and waiting to catch fire. But a hotter world doesn't just affect fires and droughts. Melting glaciers and ice sheets are causing sea levels to rise. A warmer atmosphere also holds more water, which means heavy rain is more likely. Flooding is more common. London and the rest of southwestern Ontario got hit with heavy rain Friday night and Saturday. Four people have died in Spain as heavy rain and flash flooding continue to batter the southeast. The French capital has been drenched with three weeks of rain in just an hour. It's up to 20 flood warnings are in place now across England and Wales. But it also has an effect on hurricanes. Warmer air and ocean temperature results in hurricanes becoming more intense, while higher seas mean that storm surges are bigger and ultimately cause more damage. Hurricanes are categorized by their wind speed, and because warmer temperatures allow forming hurricanes to pick up more energy, category four and five hurricanes are becoming more likely. It is the strongest hurricane for the area. Since we last talked, it's been an intensification. I'm sure you can tell right now the wind is really, 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 really strong out here. In fact, experts predict hurricanes in these highest categories to more than double in frequency by the end of the century. Natural disasters have always happened, but throughout human history, we haven't had the ability to influence nature on such a large scale that it could actually change the climate. Now we do, and we have. And as long as the temperature of our world continues to rise, we can expect events like fires, drought, flooding and hurricanes to happen more often and on a bigger scale. All right, children, this is an eye opening video. If you see this, I think you just can't ignore what we as humans are collectively doing it. I'm not saying I'm not blaming anyone, but you know, it's a collective action and to to do an action, you need to know what is the problem actually. If I say, okay, do this, why will you do this? You should know why we are doing it, okay? And I hope that, you know, this part one is over and I, I hope that, you know, you actually have a little bit idea about why we are even talking about it.
you know i think you have a idea now why climate action why is what is sustainability what we are doing to the climate is important why it is important all right children so this ends our part 1 you need to just sip in some water and you are good so it's fine so otherwise then we'll kick start the part 3 which is which will focus more on the actions we know the problem now now we we will we will let's be positive now we will see lot of bad things are happening now we will see what good we can do to the environment what can we contribute to the environment okay so can i can i see a ye in the chat y a y ye so that i know my children are all set to take the actions and you know to uh, to listen to what what is next very good wonderful i see lot of yes all right okay children now let's kick start the part 3 what is part 3 actually part 3 is what are the urgent actions you can take to fight climate change now these are many actions i and i know one action won't be enough so i have listed down few actions that you can take in your life in your individual life you can tell your parents you can tell your friends number 1 is reduce your carbon footprints how you will reduce your carbon footprints carbon footprint is actually you know where it is carbon gen like you know if you eat lot of processed food if you eat jams jelly packaged food where you think it is made it is all made in industries it is all a industrial product it is a industrial led you want to eat cheetos you want to eat you know uh, cold drinks beverages bottles where it is made it is all factory led all right so you have to cut down i i don't see don't i don't say don't eat but you know you have to conscious enough to know that this is this has a high carbon footprint you you take you eat something which is not grown in your country for example you want to eat like a marshmallow and you see that marshmallow is not produced here marshmallow is coming from us so you see that from us to manila how much fossil fuel it will take to reach you it it has a high carbon footprint all right so reduce on the things that has high carbon footprints then another thing you can do is use energy wisely you know we have a limited amount of energy you know light and you know everything is all fuel fossil fuel generated so use wisely switch off the light when you are not in the room switch off your laptops shut down your laptop switch off the plugs fan ac when you don't use it you know save energy another thing you can do is transit to the renewable energy sources you know if you are building a new house if your parents are building a new house you want to invest on something invest on solar panels you know which which uses the the energy which has a you know renewable sources invest on something that is helpful to the environment another thing you can do is eat a climate stable diet now what is climate stable diet climate stable diet is which is grown in your locality don't eat something that is traveling from so so from a long distance don't eat you know i don't say that don't eat meat or don't do like this eat locally grazed meat eat locally which your local seller is selling eat food which is grown which is seasonal which is local you know that will give you more nutrition also that will cut down all the carbon footprint also green your travel how you can green your travel you can take public transports you can pool in with your friends if you are coming from the so same locality and you want you prefer car ask your three four friends to come and join you you know cut down on those individual cars cut down on your travel cut down on you know use public transports more use take trains more okay then another thing you can do individually to you know uh, to take action against climate change is consume less waste less and compost you know what is composting okay composting is usually when you you put your home waste to in a compost bin and it it decomposes there only and produces soil that is another topic to discuss but you should waste less the you know the landfill point i told you that there is lot of landfill waste and it produces methane and you know that that factor you know waste less don't buy too much packaged food and you know just eat and uh, eat and waste that don't waste food don't waste something and throw it randomly all right then another thing is make diy recipes for plastic free living see plastic free is very important which i have highlighted it because i will be discussing it further rest all i have told you but making diy recipes which i do and to lead a plastic free life is also another great great action you can take to fight this climate change i will tell you later in the slide how you can do it 
then another factor is support and join youth movements you know there is a uh, youth icons like greta who's working so much so wonderfully on climate actions and climate change and you are exactly like those the like greta you can be next greta you can just join the youth movements you can join and support you know um, uh, beach cleanup philippines has wonderful beaches but you know recently burake was closed for 6 months why burake was clean, closed for 6 months for tourist because we are we we as humans are disrupting the bio, the the corals there we are polluting the water we are just disrupting that is why you have to join the movements you have to join organizations who, who are you know working towards beach cleanups and you know wildlife protection and animal welfare there are so many just google those those um, you know those activities those organizations and join them volunteer and then another thing is get active and vote i i i know that you are you you must be not be eligible to vote but voting is very important T- talk to your parents your po- parents must be voting for you know parties who work who who have the agendas as climate action in their political uh, strategies so look read and be aware of the political parties because they are the ones who will take action we can just talk and we can just work on individual levels but who will work on a higher level the the bureaucrats the politicians so you have to you, your parents or pe- your loved ones who are eligible to vote should vote and support people who are taking serious actions on climate change all right children so these are few of my suggestions where you can take certain actions to fight this climate change on a individual level all right now let's focus on making diy recipes for a plastic free living so actually do you know uh, do you know that you know more than 150 no 552 million shampoo bottles end up in landfill every year you know there are so much of plastic you know plastic waste generating and making your home homemade products you know making your home own cleaning homemade products is the best way you can reduce so much of plastic waste you know now i will tell you you know because there is a lot of uh, you know lot of plastic junk that comes with our shampoo bottles with the mask we apply you know the sheet mask with the conditioners with the face wash you know we keep on changing every two weeks the dish washer you know the glass cleaning bottle, bottles all the consumer products basically all the personal care products they all come you know in in all plastic packaged products now what happens to that plastic packaging is that children let me tell you plastic is just immortal they don't degrade they don't decompose they are just there so if you see this slide what is the problem with plastic okay uh, i know for industrial reuse plastic is like a blessing you know there are so many things especially in this covid times plastic has helped a lot in the industrial sector but the problem with the plastic is when we use it on a individual on, on on common plastic the seven types of common plastic we use on the on the individual basics it has many you know it has many problems so if you see this slide you see that you know number one where there is a yellow arrow i i am showing household and personal care products what happens in these household and personal care products is that obviously the bottle is plastic and it contains plastic preservatives and microplastics inside them you know microplastics like polyethylene polymethylene you know nylon polyethylene you know there are so many pro- polypropylene these all plastics are you know what are microplastic plastic which is less than 5 mm okay so these plastics are mixed in our in our product now what happens is when we take shower when we wash our face this plastic goes down in the drain and mixes with the water all right when this mixes with what obviously this this reaches the oceans when this plastic the microplastic i am not talking about big plastic okay when this microplastic which you can't see you you will see that it is clear but there are so much microplastic this microplastic never degrades in the ocean and it keeps on floating and it attracts water borne bacteria and toxins now when it attracts the toxins what what marine animals think what marine animals think oh this is food let's eat this all right when this is eaten by fish or by insects by larva or by any marine animals then there is a problem 
there are two problems number one we also eat fish we also eat seafood okay so that if we eat those fish and we eat those food that enters our food chains and that plastic has come inside our food chain once the once the plastic has entered the food chains it eventually enters the life cycle you know it it eventually enters in the natural cycles which disrupts the natural cycles of the earth another problem is if they eat the plastic the marine animals they die because their digestive tracts cannot digest this plastic it blocks their digestive tracts and they are they are killed by our actions and when these marine animals are killed kill the the cycle of the marine life and natural cycle and human chain is disrupted so what you can do what you can do is you know you can give your home your life your lifestyle a plastic free makeover or maybe recycled plastic is very important very very good if you see that you know you, you you should use products which are using recycled plastic basically they are clearing up all the plastics in around the surroundings and upcycling it to to reuse it all right so just give it give your life a plastic free make you know a makeover and don't contribute to plastic litter however ways look for eco friendly packaging look for something which doesn't have too much plastic packaging just reduce that all right so basically you can see this this is a picture very very drenching picture of a fish which has been killed by plastic eating plastic then there has been so many pictures of whale and dolphins ending up in the sea because they are they are eating this microplastic all right so basically plastic kills this this is what it means from this slide plastic is immortal it doesn't degrade it doesn't decompose okay children so can i see a yay in the chat that you will be reducing your plastic so that i know that you know you all will reduce and not contribute to plastic litter wonderful i see so many yays all right if you cannot cut down completely just try to you know reduce all right or maybe recycle if you have something at home reuse it recycle it all right don't contribute too much okay now uh, as maribel also told you in the starting i also make my uh, own products i make my what i do is obviously i buy something from the market but i i make also my products which is very easy to make you know when i make my own products you know it helps the planet obviously as i told you it saves me money because you know these shampoos and not shampoos but these you know face washes creams and all are so expensive so it saves saves me money it reduces my landfill waste as you can see and it takes out lot of plastic waste from my home and because when my one face wash is over i will make another one i will not you know buy so many thing it is like a one step towards my green lifestyle my green living then it also supports local community you know if if i am making something and i am telling my my neighbor that hey this is what i am doing and you know you should also do that so it helps the local community or my friend will say hey i used your face wash it is so good can can you tell me the recipe i tell her so basically this actually creates awareness it supports the local community then obviously it helps you simplify and reduce how it helps you simplify because see if i have to make my face wash i will not make 10 types of face wash i will just make one okay i make one use that and keep it when it is finished then i will make another one so obviously it will help me and if i have to buy and go in go in the market and buy it i will buy oh i like this flavor i like this solution i like this strawberry i like you know vanilla so i have options i will obviously invest on that if i am making my own products it will help me simplify and reduce and obviously the most important part is it is free of microplastic and it is free of chemicals you know it it is my skin is exposing less to the chemicals my body my environment is all uh, preservative free toxin free synthetic chemicals all right so children i will encourage you to make your home products there are so many things so many recipes in the in the internet you can just have a look and uh, and just make your own products so basically one one uh, you know what product i would like you to know that how you make you know the coffee scrub you know everyone loves coffee and everyone wants to have coffee in the morning there are when you when you 
you know take out the coffee when you roast the coffee there are coffee covers and the grounds so i make a very cool uh, zero waste coffee body scrub what i need is just coffee grounds some coconut oil some sugar and a reusable jar whatever jam jam bottle or you have any oil bottle just take that a spoon and some measuring cup so i will just show you a video how i make my own coffee scrub to everyday use to wash my skin which is sheer out of uh, coffee grounds all right just have a look everyone and welcome to native keeps again today we are going to make a simple coffee grounds body scrub and exfoliator to start this recipe look for any jar from your kitchen wash it dry it and put it aside i will reuse my old jar today to store the scrub first ingredient is of course the otherwise wasted coffee grounds for this recipe i will take half cup of coffee grounds here the second ingredient is also a very common from our kitchen i will be taking half a cup of brown sugar in this body scrub brown sugar has smaller particles so it is gentler and safer the third ingredient will be cold pressed virgin and pure coconut oil quantity will also be half a cup so basically the ratio is all 1 is to 1 is to 1 the last would be some essential oil of your choice today i am taking caramel essential oil as i like the aroma of caramel and coffee together when you combine quality coffee grounds with other natural ingredient to create a coffee scrub the benefits for your skin are immediately noticeable Used coffee grounds are the waste product from brewing coffee when it is in the final stages of coffee preparation. So what next? Next is just mixing them slowly together, preferably in a glass, clay or porcelain bowl. First goes our coffee grounds, followed by the brown sugar and finally our gorgeous and ever so versatile coconut oil. Do not mix the coconut oil at once. Just give them a nice slow stir and see the consistency. It should not be runny nor it should be too dry. You can any day adjust the consistency in your coffee scrub. There is no thumb rule. Instead of using body scrubs with harsh chemicals, coffee scrubs combined with salt, sugar, and oils leaves your skin nourished and moisturized rather than just cleansed. The main benefit of body scrubs is how they aid in removing dead skin cells which helps promote clearer and softer skin. You can enjoy the satisfying feeling of the massage in your own home. Then goes up around 15 drops of caramel essential oil. Actually, I like the idea of coffee and caramel. So it is so smooth and so delicious. But according to me you can add vanilla essential oil also because coffee and vanilla is also a great combination even coffee and cinnamon caffeine helps lighten the skin and tighten the skin which can help reduce cellulite when applied under and around the eyes it can minimize the appearance of puffy eyes because caffeine restricts blood vessels which reduces swelling and inflammation it can also help treat dark circles under the eyes Caffeine is also loaded with antioxidants which help to fight premature skin aging like wrinkles, sunspots and fine lines. Brown sugar's granulated particles exfoliate your skin, clearing away dry and dead skin cells. It helps create a smoother skin and lends you a youthful glow. Brown sugar also has antibacterial properties and glycolic acid that keeps your skin radiant and healthy. Coconut oil benefits the skin, reducing inflammation, keeping skin moisturized, and helping heal wounds. It helps treat acne and protect the skin from harmful bacteria. So that's all. A simple zero waste scrub that works wonders for your skin. It's totally zero waste, and since you are soaking your coffee in the oil, you can keep this for a month for best results. An added tip. If you do not have essential oils you can go with 1 tablespoon of cinnamon powder in this. It has great benefits for the skin plus it smells fantastic. 
all right children so this this is one of the scrub that i make and i use and i am very happy about it once my coffee grounds are up i will just mix sugar i will mix coconut oil and put it on my face it's superb all right so like this this is just an example you can you can make many products like your own like this is my this is this is what i make and i am i'm not saying these are the only recipes you can make anything and everything in the world i have made a body wash sheet mask you know toners conditioner shampoo deodorant mouthwash everything can be made if you really want to cut down on your plastic all right and so you should try actually initially we were we wanted you children to also make but you know because of the time constraint and because of the availability of the materials we we dropped the idea but uh, i hope that in future we would like to make with you all together but you know you can make it by yourself also so this that's why i showed you a video so it's it's very easy to make all right children so can i get a thumbs up or maybe what all, can you write me a great that you understood that we should make our own products Uh, a G eight would be nice if you are you don't want to type that. Okay, so children, let's summarize the 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 workshop today. Oh my God, so many great. So you children are now gonna make all your products on your own. Okay, don't ask mama and daddy to buy you so many fancy creams and shampoos. Okay, I would like I would like all of you to make your own products. Okay, just Google and make it. All right. so children let's summarize the workshop today uh, how will you what are the climate actions you will be taking you know to tackle climate change on an individual level just see the slide just go uh, plastic free package free reduce your carbon footprints save energy save water work on you know waste management compost switch to renewable energies follow a conscious diet don't go for too much packaging food and this and jams and jellies just